We have two unknown positive integers m and n whose product is less than 100. Right? So, some say 6 into 10 or 11 into 4, something like that. There are two additional statement of facts available. m into n is divisible by 6 consecutive integers. m plus n is a perfect square. Which of the two statements above, alone or in combination, shall be sufficient to determine the numbers m and n? Using this, can you find m? Using this, can you find them? Failing that, can you use both put together and find them? The data sufficiency question. Each statement alone is sufficient. This is enough. This is enough. Both together are sufficient, but neither alone is sufficient. Or two alone is sufficient, one alone is not sufficient. One and two together are not sufficient and additional data is needed. Or question cannot be answered. One alone is sufficient, but two alone is not sufficient. Same set of standard five statements for data sufficiency, but the statements are all in some random order. Fine. So, the key in all of these questions is to make sure that you are going step by step. Look at statement one without thinking about statement two. Can we find m and n using this? m into n is divisible by product of six consecutive. It is divisible by six consecutive integers: j, j plus one, j plus two, all the way till j plus five. Think about it. Think about this number n c six. Will be n into n minus one into n minus two all the way till n minus five by one into two into three all the way till six. This is always an integer or six consecutive numbers. The number is multiple of six consecutive. Any product of any six consecutive numbers. And one to one into two into three into four into five. 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into 6, 3 into 4 into 5 into 6 into 7. If a number is divisible by 6 consecutive integers, and so, so this here a product of any 6 consecutive integers is a multiple of 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into 6. If m into n is divisible by 6 consecutive integers, be it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so, we are looking at a number that is a product of two consecutive. Here, we are demonstrating a different fact. I want to give you an example where we say product of any six consecutive numbers is always a multiple of six factorial. And so, now we are not thinking about all six numbers being the number being a product of all of this. It's just divisible by all of this. Okay. If m into n is divisible by six consecutive integers, then it should be the LCM of six consecutive integers. Think about this. If you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, LCM is 60. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, LCM is 420. You have a 7, 6, and 8. And 5, 6, 7, 8 is going to be 420 or beyond. This will be 840. You're going to be hard pressed to find 6 consecutive integers whose LCM is less than 60. There's definitely going to be a multiple of 6. Definitely going to be a multiple of 5. Definitely going to be a multiple of 4 in that 6 integer. You are going to get a 2 square and a 3 and a 5 in any 6 consecutive integers. Definitely. It is very much possible that we get more than that. And so if we have this, then we can say that the LCM minimum will be 60. So we know that M into N is divisible by 6 consecutive integers. M into N is a multiple of 60. Wonderful. We want to find m and n. m into n is a multiple of 60, but the product is less than 100. Or m into n equals 60. It cannot be 120. So, it is 60. So, m into n is 60. Can we find the answers? Not necessary. We could have 1 into 60, 2 into 30, 3 into 20, 4 into 15, 5 into 12, 6 into 10. All of these are possible. So we know that m into n is 60, but we still cannot find m and n. So statement 1 is not sufficient. Let's go to statement 2. We know that there are two positive integers m and n whose product is less than 100. We know that m plus n is a perfect square. So how does it help? 1 and 15, 1 plus 15 is a perfect square. 
2 and 23, 2 plus 23 is a perfect square. 5 and 31, 5 plus 31 is a perfect square. Any of these are possible. So statement 2 standalone is not sufficient. Now let's put both of these together. This tells us that the product is 60. This tells us that m plus n is a perfect square. Looking at 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, 6 and 10. 1 plus 60 is not a perfect square. 2 plus 30 is 32, not a perfect square. 3 and 20, 23, not a perfect square. 4 into 15, 19, doesn't work. 5 plus 12, 17, doesn't work. 6 and 10, 16, this works. So this is the only possibility. So if we know both of these, we can say m comma n are 6 and 10. That means both statements together are sufficient to answer the question. But neither statement alone is sufficient. We're looking at choice B, B for Bombay.